Okay, so I'm going to do mine over basic slime, like health management chores. Um, I know everybody's been kind of talking about things that like can happen and sicknesses and stuff. So this is just kind of some basic stuff about how you can prevent some of it. Not everything, but just some stuff. So there's like at the farm I worked at, we have what's called first rounds. So um, some of the stuff's pretty self-explanatory. I'll kind of go into detail more. But we scrape the feeders, scrape the crates. We get the sows up and we treat. Treatments are usually done in like sets of three. Sometimes you gotta restart it over again if you don't see any improvement. Um, we dust the mats and we treat with iodine and change heat lamps. Okay, now what are these sows with piglets or before? Yes, these are in Pharaoh, I'm sorry. Okay, Pharaoh. Yeah, Pharaoh and Taurus is kind basically. of what they're called, yeah. Gotcha. So the feeders, um, feeders must be scraped at least once to twice a day. We scrape them twice usually, but uh, it prevents moldy feed, which you can kind of see here. Um, oh, this is this is what moldy feed will look like in the feeders, and this is what it's supposed to look like. These are actually uh, what the feeders look like at the place that I worked this summer, exactly. So we kind of just like use like a garden hoe and just shovel out the moldy feeders. Um, pigs are usually pretty picky about what they eat, so if they're not satisfied with what they're eating, they'll just stop. And um, this also allows us, it, says it's such, it was such a big place, it allows you to see if someone isn't getting feed, because if they obviously aren't eating, that's not going to be good. So this is just scraping the gestation crates, uh, pretty self-explanatory, you just, uh, they must be scraped free of feces once a day. Uh, it's most important when sows are farrowing because you want the piglets to come into like a clean environment. <coughs> They're, it's obviously going to get dirty, but it's important for them and I'll kind of talk more about that later. Um, so getting sows up is probably the most important, I would say, uh, it doesn't seem like it would be, but we actually get them up twice a day. Um, if, they're, if they aren't like made to get up, most of the time they won't. They have uh, they have like a lower water for that their babies can drink out of, so they'll just drink out of that and their feed, they'll just lift their head up and eat. Um, we actually, the sows are gotten up, so you kind of just take both your hands and smack them on the back. I mean, at first I was real nervous, but they're so big, they aren't gonna, they won't care. Half the time, some of them, um, some of them are trained where if they see you coming, they'll just get up, but it's important that they'll get up or their muscles are just gonna give out and they won't eventually, won't be able to get up. So I'll kind of talk about treating. I'm gonna talk about three different things we usually treat with, at least I see like once a day. So the first thing is called Naxil and it's used for an antibiotic and it's um, injected intermuscularly. Um, so pigs have like a triangle part on their neck right here. So that's where you want to get it, that's where you want to shoot for it. You also do that for babies too, it's a lot easier on a bigger cell, it's a bigger space. Um, Naxil comes in a powder form, so you have to uh, mix it with sterile water. So if you have like a one gram vial, you add 20 milliliters, four gram, 80, and so on, so that's kind of... And usually does the sterile water come with it? Comes as two bottles, or do you provide a sterile um, water? I think they, buy, they get a different sterile water. I think they use that for a bunch of other stuff too. Okay. Um, so another thing is flinixin. Um, that's an anti-inflammatory medicine because pigs sometimes their hooves and their foot get swollen. So that's also injected intermuscularly into that triangle. And that is two milliliters for every 40, 45 kilograms of body weight. So that's about 100 pounds. So I'm going to give them more than that. Now what is, uh, I'm a little rusty on pigs. What's your maximum number of mils do you want to inject at any one site intramuscularly? you guys have a general rule of thumb? I can tell you the general rule of thumb for cattle that I use, but you know, because if you put too much in, you're going to do tissue damage, that's the bottom line. So do you have any idea? I like knew what it was, yeah. now I just can't okay. remember. Um, you can put too much in there though, so you do have to be really oh, careful yeah. with what it is. Otherwise, so. if, if it's really, if the pig's big remember. enough and it calls for more than this limit, then you do two injections, mm -hmm. basically. One on each side, too, and make yeah, sure yeah, you don't yeah. put it in the same side. Does it depend on what type of drug, though? Because, like, banamine, what that is, is very thin, but, like, if you get to, like, depot, which is really thick. Yeah, well, no, it's actually the initial volume. It's just the volume. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm asking efficient. you guys, because some of you work in production. When I did this with cattle, my rule of thumb was 10 cc's intramuscular one spot. Yeah. And that's planning. Yeah. I don't know if that's right, but at 10 is where we switch. So we have like a lot of yeah. things that require 20 ml. Yeah, I know. Then, yeah, uh, they're, they're they're do one heavy enough. Side. Okay, so maybe you're using 10 mils for pigs too. That's plenty for any animal, basically. Uh, Seahorses, we always did 15. 15, switch. okay. See, and me, I would rather split that up. but. 
And if you're going to switch medications, sometimes they need two medications. You want to make sure you do them on separate sides too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so then one more is just Tylen. Uh, it's used for uh, like a chronic diarrhea and that's also injected intermuscularly and it's four milligrams per pound of body weight. So the next thing we kind of do is dust. They have, the piglets have like black bats in there in their crates and they use what's called mistral and they mix it with soy. So uh, actually uh, mistral is composed of dry and like micronized clay and that actually dries up the feces, the urine. And if you see a crate that has scours, which I kind of talked about last time, it's like that gross feces that the piglets get, that will actually dry it up and you want to put it all over the piglets, all over the litter. The more the better, to be honest. So, um, And we use, it's called like, a, it comes in a big jug, it's called like gentle iodine. Pigs lay on their sides a lot. Um, so they, if they're in the gestation crate for 17 to 21 days, they're going to start to get sores on either side. Um, so we spray, uh, you can kind of see it like right here, so they can get pretty bad. So we spray it with iodine and that will help kind of close up the wound and heal it. Sometimes they'll get them on their heads too if they're like down in their feeders a lot. Okay, don't go on yet. What if you see a bottle of iodine and it says tincture of iodine? What does that mean? Anybody know? Tincture of iodine? Mixture. It's mixed with X. What's X? Alcohol, ethanol. When you see tincture of iodine, it's not pure iodine. Mm -hmm. And you know, it'd be interesting. Do they dilute it out with water or? Yeah, I can look at the I don't know. Because say if you so. dilute it out with like 50% ethanol, then because you can buy ethanol in different concentrations, the rest of it is water. So if you 50, say you've got 70% ethanol, well, 30% of it's already water. Isn't so. that betadine then? Well, there's different products, yeah, but I mean, I'm just curious. Maybe, okay, because I got straight iodine and then the mix with beta iodine. I, I doubt if there's anything that has straight iodine in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So next time you're in the iodine thing, look at the bottle and come back and report to us. Okay. Okay, and the last thing we kind of do is just check for heat lamps. It's kind of self-explanatory too. Dead bulb lights, uh, light bulbs must be changed. Uh, they actually must be a certain, they can't be too high off the ground or too low to the mats. Um, we actually have like a stick that has a measuring thing on it, so we have to go through and adjust each one. And this is exactly what the heat lamps look like in the place that I work. So um, we usually have two uh, per crate while they're farrowing, and then they don't need them as much when they get older, so they'll usually just have one crate, one in there during wean. Now do you do the, the stick? Is it based on the age or is it always the same? It's uh, always the same. So we like okay. transfer lamps okay. between rooms. We'll okay. have to like sterilize them too because they just don't have enough for every room. So like okay. as a farrowing room gets loaded, we move the lamps and in. And then that from, stick is your standard. Yeah, it's like okay. a standard. It yeah. has like a piece of tape on it. Sure, so. sure. Um, and then we have what's called the second round and that's where we just go through, get the sows up one more time and scrape any feeders and check to see if the feed has come through. If you didn't see it in the morning, uh, sometimes it just takes a while for the machines to kick in. So and I'll just talk about two more quick things that happen every day. It's called sow washing. Kind of looks like a car wash they go through. So <laughs> they come over from the breeding barn and when they're about to give birth, um, we try to scrape, like soak them as much as we can. Um, the most important parts to get are their vulva and their flanks where the babies are going to be eating from. So um, obviously we can't get them perfect. Um, since there's so many, so they'll usually load about like two, sometimes three rooms a day, and there's 60 in a mm -hmm. room. So it takes a big, pretty big team of people to do it. And the last thing that's done every day, the entire day, is there's a sow checker. She goes through and um, helps any moms that are in distress while they're giving labor. And this summer, I actually got a chance to do it, so it was pretty interesting. Okay, so when you say pulling piglets, you're pulling them out of the out south. of okay. yeah. So you cut. So you always use your left hand if she's laying on her left side. Vice versa, use your right if she's on her right side. Okay, wait a minute. Let me see if I. If she's on her left, you use your left hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so you go on. Yep. And so you put like what looks like, like plastic sleeve, and you put like lube on it, and you kind of gently put your hand into her vagina. And, and the smaller the hand, the better. Yeah. Smaller the aren't the ladies like a skinny like. Yeah. Small, like because some men's yeah. hands are, yeah. are you are perfect for this job, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it's not like a cow, there's not as much room, obviously, as a cow. And I pulled piglets, and it's like my it's hand weird. was, I wish I had maybe somebody smaller along, yeah, they contract on your hand, and it yeah. 
squeeze is pretty tight. So um, you generally don't want to reach past your elbow because that's just going up too far in her. Um, and she'll kick, so you got to watch your face if it's pretty close down there. Um, if the piglet is coming head first, you wrap your hand around its ears and jaw and pull gently. And then sometimes it'll uh, come feet first. <laughs> and you'll want to place your index fingers between the legs and the thumb on the outside of one leg and your middle finger on the other leg and pull gently. So um, if you pull hard enough, you could rip the legs off. So you want to make sure that you pull real gently. And um, then when the baby comes out, they have someone that dries them. But you kind of want to pull the placental tissue off their face. Um, some will have more than others. And they leave their umbilical cords there to just dry up naturally, like a human. And when someone comes through and processes them, if they have like dried up long ones, we'll just cut them off. Um, so yeah, that's it. OK. That gave me a great idea. The next time I make an assignment, maybe we should have some obstetrics lessons because there's certain ways yeah. to do things and it was certain cool. ways I'm, not. That was my favorite thing I did all summer. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Here's one over here. Yeah. Why do you use your left hand if she's laying on her mm -hmm. left side and yeah, right on her right? See, I had to picture a sow on her left side. And she's on her. Yeah. So yeah. she's on her. It's just so you're not. It, I can't remember. It's, it's basically mechanical because you. It if depends on the crate that you're in because mm -hmm. there's certain crates that when she if she goes to stand up yeah. you're gonna get your arm caught. But also if you think if she's laying on this side, your face you can lift your face up like far away from the poop in the ground. You know if you go like this. Yeah, and you have more move of your arm. Yeah, you're so like if you're trying to do ball. this while yeah. she's on her yeah. leg, it's, it's, it's a, a mechanical kind of thing. But I'm sure there's exceptions. Yeah. You know, that's what it, I was saying. It also can depend on the crate because yeah. depending on yeah. the crate, like there's some of them that have like bars across. Yeah. yeah. You She'll want. stand up and they won't care if your arm's in the way or not. Yeah. So yeah. The thing is, if in the ideal situation, if if uh, room isn't a uh, a critical factor, 